Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your Favorite Blockhead. This is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and MMA into one heck of an amazing podcast. You can find your favorite blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at yourfavoriteblockhead.com. Do me a huge favor and listen to Brian's show. You'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend. Now, as I said, let's get into today's topic. So let's change it up a little bit, and let's welcome everyone back to another episode of The Nightly Rant. Welcoming? Yeah. That's weird. We don't usually welcome people. So previous episode, we did a reality rant where we talked about a reality show. That's going to be a new series that we'll have. It's like a mini series. Right, but they don't necessarily and aren't going to go consecutively you might get some back to back but you don't have to get them back to back and you might have five episodes in between before you get another one it's a series they're all based on the same topic and um they'll be interesting to watch but today i want to talk about an article that i saw and it says the seven phrases you should never say to anyone never i'm gonna guess that i say all seven of these phrases regularly Um, but that's just my pre- opinion of I, I, I'm, I'll, I'll let you know at the end okay so <laughs> talks about like ways to improve your relationships and um oh they're relationship phrases to well never in general just in general i see but everything is a relationship you and your boss is a relationship you and your client is a relationship it's all about relationships anyway the first one is come here okay And it says, you know, imagine you're sitting at your desk and your boss steps out from their office and says, come here to you in front of your coworkers. If you're anything like me, no matter how high you were holding your head prior to hearing these words, you feel pretty small. And he goes on to say that, you know, saying come here is a very negative thing. I mean, you don't do that. I don't do that. I think what we do is we'll say, like, we'll send each other a message and be like, hey, if you get a chance. You know, next chance you get, can you come here and look at something? Well, I usually say, can you come here? And you never take that negatively. Yeah, because there's no reason to. Because it's like. And it's it's not like like, you're coming out and trying to make me feel like I'm an inch small or something. No, it's more like I want your opinion on Instacart or your help with something on a WordPress website. Right. Right. (laughs) And and I think that's a very positive thing. Um, And it. What's good about it is the way that we handle it is it'll. It's the same reason I like text messaging with clients rather than, I don't know why, but emails feel like they require a response. Right. And text messages may or may not require a response. You know, if a client texts me and says, oh, there's a bug, we need to fix it. And I just go fix the bug, then I can come back and go, okay, thanks for the email. I already fixed it. Rather than, why do I have to respond and go, okay, thank you for reporting the bug to me. Now I'm going to go fix it. See, I kind of feel the opposite of you. I feel like a text message because it was sent to a so on my person all the time checking this day in, day out device is something that requires a response. And an email feels more like something I can respond to tomorrow or the next day. Fair enough, but do you know that I will say this? The reason I feel that way is because of actual experiences that I've had where I bet clients will say to me, you never responded to my email. Why haven't you responded to my email? It's been a week. Why haven't you responded to it? I'll say, because there was nothing to say. You literally said, if you agree with this, let's do this. And then we started doing this. So I assumed you would know that we agree because in your email you said... If this, then we do this. Yeah. But with text messages, I've had them say to me, like, you know, you don't respond. Oh, well, they don't care. I get I get the opposite feedback. So weird. Yes, it is. And see, therein lies 
why everybody has to approach things differently. Right. And it's like, you know, when you're doing coaching with people, like, you know, your employees or whatever, that's always something to keep in mind is how people learn. You know, yeah. I recently um, made it a point, you know, someone's become quite valuable in our organization. And I made it a point to ask this person to let this person know that not only was I happy, but you're happy. And then I ended it with and we both hope you're happy. I tell this person I like them all the time. And I meant that like we hope they're happy. And I got back a yes, you know, they're happy. But my point is you put it out there and you let the person decide how they're going to respond. They get to make their own choice. Right. No matter what they get, to, even if they have to respond, they get to say what they want to say. They're not required to say something you want them to say. Now, the next thing, are you, are you good? I'm good. All right. The next thing is number two. I hate this one because those are the rules. Okay. And, and he says that um, he feels that no matter people's age, culture or race, this, these are the five things they all have in common. All people want to be treated with dignity and respect. All people want to be asked rather than told to do something. All people want to be informed as to why they are being asked or ordered to do something. All people want to be given choices rather than threats. And all people want a second chance when they make a mistake. Okay. Um, it's like, if you're going to say something that goes against one of those five things mm -hmm. that all people like, you probably should think again. I don't understand how that applies to because those are the rules, though. That doesn't make because any sense. Because those are the rules. Those are the rules there. Those five things are the rules. Okay. So, so why you is say, saying because somebody... those are the rules, that touches on all five of those things. Okay. And that so, doesn't make any sense, but whatever. If you think it makes sense, then that's well, all you. It's right here. The words because, are, because those are the rules don't directly hit all the five truths, but they do touch upon most of them. They show a lack of respect. They do not give people a choice. They are not informative. A good rule of thumb is if you're about to say something that goes against any of George's five truths, let alone three, it's best not to say them. According to George, the words, because those are the rules, or the super annoying because I said so, makes you sound weak, and it shows you do not have the knowledge to support your order with logical reasoning. So in other words, you're just saying it, you're commanding something because you have the power to command it. And it's like I've talked to you about before. It's like having kids and they ask you for a drink and you say, well, no, you can't have a drink. Well, who are we to say they're thirsty or not? That's what that's about. Except for in the situation where somebody's doing something and they can't do it because those are the rules of like a group or something. But that's a different story. He's talking about when people say, well, but you well why can't that. I? Well, why, I think it's inferred. It you know, well, why can't I do blah, blah, blah in the kitchen? Well, because those are the rules. Well, that's a lame answer. I think that one's dumb, but okay. Anyway, moving on. Number three, <laughs> everybody's favorite. Calm down. That just He's, incites the opposite of calm in 99.9% .9 of people. I agree with what he says here. He says, I, if I've learned anything in my life, it's that rarely is my first response the best response. But no matter how many times I remind myself of this and try to remove the words calm down from my vocabulary, I still let those words slip from time to time. You know, I know it's funny. A long time ago, I changed saying calm down into take six, six breaths. And it works much better. Because sometimes people are like, well, I could take six breaths. But sometimes people still react super pissed offedly. So I that get like a 50. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. It bugs no. me when you say that. Okay. It does. Maybe you could have said that sometime I, in the last six years of our relationship. Then yeah, It is what it is. There are things you bat There are battles you choose to have. And there is battles you choose not to have. That's a battle I choose not to have. It's not that important. I don't, don't act ragefully towards you, do I? No, you just said I don't. That's how I know I don't. I just choose to stay. I don't really care for it that much because I can tell that it's calm down. And nobody wants to be told to calm down. If I told you to calm down, you'd probably hit me with the frying pan. You'd be like, you've told me to calm down crap. and you're lucky you're still alive afterwards. Exactly. So don't do it again. So calm down. 
Good thing you can't commit murder live on the air. Well, then maybe that would help Good our ratings. Good thing we're not live. It would help our ratings. <laughs> um, oh, number four. I've been guilty of this many times. I'm not going to say this again. You always say it again, though. You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> you repeat yourself just as much as the last person. And? That's what you're picking on. So I'm not going to say this again. But she will. Nope. Done. I think it's interesting because they definitely take it negatively in this whole description. I don't think that's always a negative thing either. I think that's kind of a reach. Well, and it's talking about the approach you can use is to tell a list of things to the person that you'd like them to do and encourage them to be willing to think it over. So you say, you know, is there anything I could say that would get you to do A, B, and C? I'd like to think so. And then you let them think about it. That is the most manipulative sentence I've ever heard in my life. So <laughs> I don't think it's manipulative. That's actually worse. I don't think it's manipulative. I, I think do. it would get people to calm down. I think it would I'm get you throat sometime. punched in the junk. I'm going to try so. it sometimes and see what happens. You do you, bro. <laughs> so number five. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> wow. Yeah, and? Just say it out loud. What do you want me to do about it? Say it. What do you want me to do about it? I change tones. What do you want me to do about it? I don't say shit like that. What do you want me to do about it? What do you want me to do about it? I think that one's What do you well. want me to do about it? See how you can change how what it means? Uh-huh. But it doesn't help advance the conversation any. I mean, <laughs> you're except basically looking people, at the other... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Except for when people take it literally and tell you what they want you to do about it. Even then so. it doesn't help the conversation, though, because that it just does. makes you angry. No. I say to the manager of the team, the team in the Philippines, all the time, what do you want me to do about it? And then she tells me what she wants me to do about it, and I go and do what she wants me to do about but it. But what if what she wants you to do is wrong? Then we have a conversation about what she said and how I think it's wrong. And then we come to a happy place. It always furthers the conversation Interesting. with them. <laughs> That's good. Now, I fully that's understand. Good, that's, that's a good management technique right there, though. If I said to you, when you were, like, having a rage out, what do you want me to do about it? You would probably become ten times more rage-filled. Because in certain contexts, it's super rude. I'd probably but also in other, super quiet. In other contexts, it's not rude. So that's why I think that one's also a reach for this list. The shit you read on well, Medium sometimes. Well, but remember, is this crap. is things you should never say to another person. So the whole, well, it could have a positive connotation doesn't really matter because it also could have a negative connotation. So you don't say things that could have a negative connotation. But that makes it not a thing you should never say. It makes a thing you should probably never say to an angry person. Look, if you don't want to overthink it and you just want to get positive results, you never do the negative things that could invoke a negative response ever. Because you already know that there's X percentage chance. Like when I'm playing chess and I'm looking for a win and I'm studying an opening, they give you a chart. Black one, 32% of the time. White one, 45% of the time. And it was a draw X percent of the time. Well, depending on how those numbers look and what color I'm trying to play the opening, I'm going to pick my, my variations that lead to the most chances of me winning or drawing. Uh huh. And it's the same thing in life. You, you take the you take the path of least resistance, and so this is how you take the path of least resistance. You don't invite negative connotations into the situation. You just don't do these things because a larger percentage of the time you're going to get negativity back. So if that's the case, you don't do it. That's why I think it belongs on the list. Now. This one's just, I, I can't even think of a time when this isn't really rude. Because even if you're right, you're still wrong when you say this, in my opinion, okay? Number six, what's your problem? Okay. I've even told myself not to say that. And then I hear myself saying it. 
And then I've you told, kick yourself in the mind. And then I say to myself, that was no matter whether you're okay. So I'm 100 percent right. Yeah, I know I'm right. But still, you shouldn't have said that. I don't care if you're right or wrong. You shouldn't have said that. Like, that's just not the right thing to say, period. And that's weird. It's, and that's why I say I think that's 100% a bad thing. I think it's a nice, blunt way to tell somebody who's treating you like shit that they're treating you like shit. I don't know. I probably wouldn't say it to somebody I like, but outside of those people, I don't give a rat's butt or a rat's ass. Well, but that's the point. I mean... Either way, you're coming off rude. I don't care who you say it to. I've come to the conclusion that I'm okay with the fact that people think I'm rude, so. Well, remember, I think you're going to, at some point in your life, you're going to embrace the philosophy that I've been embracing, which is what other people think about you is none of your damn business. You know who you are, so why do you care what other people think about you? It doesn't make it true. I mean, like, oh my God, honey, I heard a story about you. You want to know what they're saying about you on Facebook? They say you're green with orange hair. Do you know this? Like that crazy guy, that weird guy on that one like teenage show. And he, he like, I don't remember. He was like an, an agent or something. And he stole from somebody and they, they dyed his pool water blue and then they yeah it's called liar 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 is that what it is and then they put like the orange shampoo and yeah oh my god you know they they said you're like that person on facebook now why would you be going oh my god i can't believe they say that i have you know blue skin and 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 orange hair i can't believe they would say that you know you don't so why would you care i'm actually purple with green spots but that's the point like so you're purple with green spots you're not what they say you are, and you know you're not. So why waste time on that crap? Like I don't understand that at all. Like why? There's people a funny waste time story on... that goes along with that comment. So tell it. I love funny stories. Do you? Okay. So if anybody on this podcast does not know already, hi, I was adopted. But when, <laughs> when the social worker called my parents to ask them if they wanted to adopt me, they said, "Of course." We don't care. She's purple with green spots. <laughs> You've told me that before. So, since then, I have been purple with green spots. I love it. My mother makes jokes about it occasionally. Well, it's like Alyssa. I call her the moose on the loose with a purple papoose. It's just a nickname that's stuck to her. That is the longest nickname in the history of nicknames. You call her Moosey, Lucy the Moosey. Uh-huh. This one. Like, whatever. Yeah, moose on the loose with a purple papoose is longer than Mo- Lucy the Moosey. What I think is funny is they re- they suggest that instead of what's your problem, you should say, what's the matter? Or <laughs> how can I help? Ugh, how no. can I help rubs me the same way please advise rubs you. Please advise. I hate that. Especially please when advise. it's like a client and the client will say, you know, like they know nothing about the technology and they admit it when they hire you. And then when you're running into a problem, they're like, well, how can I help? And I know 100% in my heart that most of those people mean, how can I help? But there's that percentage that causes me to be rubbed the wrong way that actually mean, well, I don't believe you're having a problem. Please advise is always rude. Yes. Please advise is always rude. I agree. Please advise is always rude. Yes. Always. Every single fucking time please it's never not rude. rude yeah yeah the number seven <laughs> ah. is this the last one oh, yes well you know there were seven i couldn't days. remember if there was five or seven. Oh, good it's trying to go away number seven why don't you be reasonable why don't you be reasonable why don't you be reasonable i don't know why don't you be reasonable i don't know why don't you be reasonable you know, it's like this is the calm. worst thing to say because it, nobody it, else knows anybody else's definition of reasonable. Well, and it's like, what if I think, what if I think I'm being perfectly reasonable right now? Well, but it, it kind of puts you on the defensive, though, because if I say to you, you know, why don't you be reasonable? You immediately know that I think that you're not being reasonable. So then you're saying to yourself, but I am being reasonable. And you get defensive. Right. And then you want to tell somebody to go suck it and then go jump it escalates off things bridge. it doesn't de-escalate things and i think that's really the point of these seven things is that they're there to encourage you to de-escalate a situation <laughs> rather than escalate a situation i really do i think that's i think that's the whole thing and i think like it says in the conclusion it's like talks about how 
words hold power, both good and bad. And, and I agree with that. I think you can tear people down with words. Or I think you can lift them up with words. And I think at this point in like our relationship, we can probably say that 99.9% .9 of the time we have never said something to the other person to tear them down. And I can say that 100% of the time we've never said something to the other person to tear them down. Add the words on purpose. Uh-huh. Okay? Like that's. But yet you, we've all been around people who are in relationships. And for whatever reason, the man or the woman, it doesn't matter who it is, it's equal on both sides if you ask me. They're not happy in the relationship, but they don't want to leave. Who knows? Maybe the sex is no good. I mean, who knows what it is? There's something about the relationship they don't like. And they want to bail. They're not married. Not that that really should matter, but it kind of matters because you made a bigger commitment. But anyway, they're not married. And they'll be like, oh, well, you know, you know, John over there, if he could ever get it up without the little blue pill. Why do you got to say that? That happened on Married at First Sight, remember? Yeah. Like, why do you got to say that? Why do you got to say that? She therapy. said he lasted I mean, 15 seconds. I mean, that's not accidental. If you accidentally, like, you know, if someone says, if someone's your really good friend in a group like that, and they're like, oh, my God, you guys had sex finally? Yes. Well, how was it? Well, to be honest, he only lasted like 15 seconds. That's telling your friend. And your friend best not repeat that. But opening the conversation with he lasted 15 seconds? Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think that's the key to remember is that words can tear people down or they can lift them up. There's no reason to tear people down. And that's why I was getting at with us is that, yes, I think we've both had mistakes, small ones. Well, because sometimes respect. you say something you don't realize is going to tear the other person down. Exactly. And that's what I'm talking about. Mistakes. Then you realize it after. But no one's, like none of us has ever done it on purpose. And I think that's why we always start out from a better spot. Because even if you get in an argument, if you look at the, an argument as like digging a hole, and you're going to hit a rock bottom. And at that point, your relationship's over. Uh -huh. If you look at it that way, every argument you have that's like that is eroding at your foundation of your relationship. But when you can start fresh at the top and say, I never purposely hurt you. You're right at the top of the, mo of the mountain again. And you always sit there. You're not worried about hitting rock bottom. You can be yourself. You can ask for what you want. You're right. You can, you can ask for your needs because there's a comfort level knowing that other person isn't going to purposely hurt me. If I say I'm feeling really depressed because X and you were to react, <laughs> you're depressed because of that. What's wrong? Do you think the next time I'm going to want to say that to you? Nope. Hell no. But when you know the person's not going to judge you that way. And I don't, by the way, I don't mean guys that she's going to agree with every, every time I say that can be, oh, poor baby. No, it's not like that. But she doesn't laugh at me and ridicule me and make fun of me for that. And like I saw somewhere else just to kind of wrap this up. A thing about what there was an article I saved and maybe one time we'll talk about it. Um, that was talking about things people do to keep their relationship fresh and edgy. And weirdly enough, I have to mention this because it struck me so hard because so many people don't get this. And that's why I'm going to mention it. You're going to be like, oh, they use humor when they feel like something's going to become an argument or a disagreement. Uh -huh. We do that all the time. And like, I would say 99% of the time it prevents something from turning into an argument. And that's because what we're doing is we're, we're teetering on that edge and the other person realizes it and doesn't really want an argument. Right. Didn't intend for it to go there. Maybe they made a mistake. And then they finish about. the joke so and everything's joke, fine. And then everything's good. And then you know, sometimes the other person will come back with a joke. And that's why like the first time we went out to a restaurant with Deborah, she was tripping out on us because we were, she thought we were arguing. And we're like, actually, we're avoiding arguing by doing this. And we always poke fun at each other. Yeah, you take out some of the frustration you have at the other person by having like a little banter about something dumb and you feel better. Hey, yeah, just poke a little fun at each other. And it's, it's a good thing. But I noticed that and I thought, you know, the rest of this article, since I know that works, the rest of this article could be interesting. So we'll see. Is there anything to add to the seven things? Anything you learned from seven things list? I thought two of them were dumb.
Which two did you think were dumb? Well, I can't remember now, but I no voiced. response from me. I voiced that I thought they were dumb at the time. During the time. Okay, I think I remember so, which two they were. if anybody else remembers, mad props. Because I think they're a gray area, and I don't think gray area should be in these definitive lists. So it really should have been five things, in my opinion. But you could also add please advise. You remember what I said, Andrew Dice Clay said about bisexual? There is no bisexual. Uh huh. You either suck on that yes, thing or I know. you don't. Well, this is kind of the same thing. It, there is no such thing as dual purpose, it's either negative. Or it's not. But some things are sometimes negative and sometimes positive. It's either negative or it's not. That's no, the point. it's not. If it has the potential, a high enough potential to be negative, then it's negative. And what if it's right at 50-50? Not everything's black Don't and white. Don't make decisions based off of the majority. So 10 people are here and we're going to decide where we're going to go for dinner. If it's a 5-5 five to five split, we've got a problem. Uh-huh. But if it goes 5-3 and 2... Three different restaurants. We go with the restaurant. Deciding the something like what you're going to eat for dinner is a definitive decision. Same you thing. Have to make. Probability. This is not. Probability of it being negative. If it's 75%, then it's three out of four times it could be negative. You're being so it's unreasonable. better to just not say it. You're being unreasonable. It's so simple. Completely not being unreasonable. unreasonable. You're you're unwilling to see that point. And you're unreally, unwilling to see beyond black and white. But I No, but I do see your point. I admit that there are times when it could be positive. But I still say that if there's a chance of it creating drama and making things negative, you don't say and it. And I think you're wrong. So there's that. You know, taking risks like that to me are... They're not recommended, in my opinion. So that's where I come from on that. It just is who I am. Good for you. Can't do anything about it. A plus. So I think Bree Do you like dead. how I threw in there that you were being unreasonable just to mock the list a little bit? I think Bree is dead. You're just not going to talk to me anymore? I spoke first and said, I think Bree is dead. Now I know she's not dead because she lifted her head up. But yes, I noticed you did that. You want me to laugh? What would you like me to do about that? Or just that? reply to what I was saying would be fucking What, what would you like me to do about that? <laughs> Got you back. <laughs> the look on your face was priceless. I wish they could have seen you look on your face because you were like, you were like, well, should I say something sassy back? No, I got to give it to him. He got me back. And then you were like, but, 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 but I'm going to say something spot. sassy. What am I going to say? And you're sitting there thinking, and then I can see your head go, nah, it's not worth it. He deserves it. Let him have the the <laughs> zinger. And then you kind of all of a sudden you went, all right, fine. He can have the zinger. I have to tell you, though, out of all the things, I'm 300 percent disappointed that someone didn't laugh at my. Well, now you're well equipped joke yesterday. I know I was shocked. Nobody's laughed at it. I told it to Mitchell today. He didn't laugh. So people. She ordered a quip toothbrush and it took forever to get here. It took so long to get here that she contacted the company. They decided the package was lost, so they shipped her a new one. So two days ago, quip number two comes in the mail. And then yesterday, quip number one came in the mail. So we handed it to her when we came in the house and said, wow, now you're well equipped. And she didn't even acknowledge it. I'm just, Not even a little like, bit. The amount of dad joke in that dad joke was just so splendid. And nobody laughed. That was the best dad joke. And on that I very depressing funny. note, good night, everyone. Ah, Stella dad jokes. Thank you for listening to the Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production. 